Welcome back. My name is Bridges. Today we are going to look at the chapter number 6. Earlier we have already completed the history of class 6 and now we are looking at the history of class 7. So before starting the chapter number 6, I would request you to please like and subscribe the channel and also enable the notifications. So in this chapter we will look at the towns, traders and the craftspersons. So this chapter is also related to the art and architecture of the different dynasties and how these different cultures and architectures and art developed. So let us understand. So in this particular chapter there is a lot of stories but what we need to do that we just need to get the important information which is directly related to our examination. So we will look at all those concepts only. Okay. So let's understand and let's start the chapter. So at the right hand side, uh, under the map, it has provided some information, some important center of the trade and artisan products in the central and south India. So at that time, what all cities were important. Okay, so the previous chapters also have emphasized enough that uh, these days, UPSC is more asking the questions which are related to geography plus history base. So always remember these important places which have been uh, mentioned or has been shown here. Okay, so let us move ahead and understand the art and architecture and the administrative center of that time. So, as we have already know that the Chola dynasty, uh, which was Tanjore, was the capital of the Cholas. Okay, the perennial river Kaveri flows near this beautiful town. So, Tanjore was the capital, and the Kaveri was a perennial river. Perennial means which does not dry in the summers. Okay, and which keeps on flowing. This is the meaning of perennial. So Rajeshwara, Raj Rajeshwara temple built by the king Raj Raja Chola. So remember this, who built this temple Raj Rajeshwara. Though earlier we have already covered in the previous chapters, but just to put the things in the context. So remember this Raj Rajeshwara temple built by the Raj Raja Chola. So as much as we will revise and repeat the thing, it will provide us the consolidated information. It will help us to remember the things for longer time remember this so its architecture who was the architect of this particular architecture so he was Kunjaraj Mallan okay Raja Raja Perun Thachan who was the profound uh, profoundly carved this uh, name on the temple wall inside is a massive shivalim so the architect's name has been provided the distinct characteristic of this particular temple has been provided that there is a massive shivalinga and apart from this who was the architect though uh, the big name will not be given so but the simple name can be given whether the Kunjaram Mallan Raja Raja or Perun Thanchan was the uh, the architect of this particular architecture so remember this okay so these uh, small things becomes important whenever we talk about the art and architecture okay and uh, these names uh, whether it is related to the dynasty or related to the king or who was the architect so these things becomes really important let us move ahead the salia weavers of the Thanjavur. so here uh, they are referring to a specific uh, weaver community it was the Salia weavers of the Tanjavur and the nearby town of the Orayar are busy producing clothes for flags to be used in temple festivals. So what was what was the purpose of using that cloth? And these clothes were used for the flag and who were preparing these clothes? Salia weavers of Tanjavur and Orayar. Okay, remember this. So fine cotton for the king and the nobility and the coarse cotton for the masses so these were the uh, type of things have been made by these particular weavers which was fine cotton clothes uh, for the nobility and the king and the other people or normal people in the kingdom they used to have the coarse cotton clothes okay so remember this these thapatis or these sculptures so medieval time what a sculpture used to be called as the thapatis are making the execute bronze uh, idols and the tall ornamental bell metal lamps so we will look uh, because the bronze item which has been remarkable in the time of the chola period as well so that image has been depicted in this chapter so we will look when we will proceed ahead okay that how beautifully they used to made all these things and how the different 
uh, crafts were made. So it will uh, provide the more in information that how these kings and kingdoms were growing and uh, what type of uh, uh, patronage they were providing to different architecture and the culture and the uh, art. Okay. Temple towns and the pilgrim centers. So the Tanjavu is also an example for a temple town. So earlier we have already understood that uh, why uh, they used to make the temple. So temple used to provide the uh, a form of culture apart from cultural activity trading activity also used to take place because several people used to be there okay so it has also provided this type of information that how economy and social or uh, social culture used to develop uh, within the vicinity of that particular uh, temple so remember this okay so different people used to give the donation to the temple the king used to provide the donation to the camp, uh, these temples. So we have already seen that the Ghatikas were there and the different land grants were being provided. So all this we have covered when you will watch the previous videos. If you are new to this channel, then when you will watch the previous videos, you would be able to understand all the lands which I am talking and how these temples used to be important, uh, used to play an important role. Uh, not only in terms of providing the cultural aspect, but also in providing the economic and social aspect as well. Okay. So here, so this was uh, uh, the these type of bronze images were very very popular, and how they used to uh, made uh, how they used to make it. So let us understand as well because uh, this technique has been provided that they they used to uh, use the lost wax technique which. You, this technology where if we have come to this particular part then let us understand that the lost wax technique is not new to the indian subcontinent uh, which the medieval uh, time kings and kingdoms were using but it was also used in the harappan time as well so harappa uh, as we have already seen that the indus indus valley civilization people who were the prominent uh, a person of that time and they prominence of civilization of that time they used to use similar or this this uh, particular technology which is called as the lost wax technology okay since uh, they were the expert in the metallurgy which we have already seen so let us understand about the how these uh, the new kings and the kingdoms used it and the prosperity of the uh, developing these type of sculptures so so bronze is an alloy containing copper and tin so we already know about this so now the bell metal what is the bell metal and how it uh, can be made so bell metal contains a greater proportion of tin than other kind of bronze so remember this whenever you uh, face any question like this in the examination so what is the bell metal and how it is procured or how it was uh, being made so then this it used to have the greater proportion of the tin otherwise what happens that the nine per, uh, ratio one ratio has been provided like nine percent of the copper and one percent of tin is um, used to make the uh, bronze but here in the when we talk about the bell metal what used to happen that the proportion of the tin used to be greater than the this particular copper okay remember this okay so now it is taking the reference of the Chola bronze statue, uh, Chola bronze statue, which we have already seen when we were discussing the different dynasties of the medieval time. So first an image was made. So how now it is talking about this particular technology of the lost wax techniques. They have used it and how this particular uh, images were uh, being made. So let us understand about the lost wax, lost wax technique. Okay. An image was made of wax. This was covered with clay and allowed to dry. So here, understand all these steps one by one. An image was made of wax. Initially, there was wax, and using that wax, an image was made. And then, with the clay allowed, the also uh, clay was also used just to cover that particular uh, image which they have, they have made using the wax. Next, what used to happen that. Uh, it was heated and a tiny hole was made in the clay so first after applying the clay they used to let it dry for some time and then they used to make a hole okay and after why the hole just when they will heat it up so all the wax which is there will be melted out and the particular uh, 
the clay will be taking a particular shape okay and what would happen that using that particular hole they will uh, pour the molten metal in that particular hole okay and once the metal cooled down and solidified the clay was removed carefully and hence they used to get such beautiful images so this was the simplistic view we can understand there were the three process first the wax statue second covered it with the uh, clay second making the hole and after uh, removing all after providing heat to that particular structure or that particular uh, shape they used to remove all the excess wax okay and after removing the wax the remaining uh, the shape which has been uh, taken or uh, the shape which has taken by the clay after applying it so the third process is powering the melted metal okay and hence they used to get the this particular image after removing the uh, all this clay okay and then they used to polish it and they used to uh, give these other things polishing it making the removing the sharp edges all these type of things used to happen okay so this was a important technique so in the uh, mains also sometimes this question about the lost wax technique can be asked so remember this that how this particular uh, technique being used not only this period in the medieval but also in the uh, ivc time the people of the indus valley civilization have also used it remember this so temple authorities use their wealth to finance the trade and banking so now it is providing the all the things that how these temple became so wealthy they not only uh, became the part of the uh, economy but also they used to provide the of uh, they used to finance and uh, they were also in the process of banking as well okay so under, understand the importance of these temples how uh, prosper the these temples used to be in that time remember this so towns emerged around the temple such as those of Bhilla Swami, which is called as the Bhilsa or the Vidisha in Madhya Pradesh, and the Somnath in Gujarat. So we already know that these places or uh, the these temples were uh, Somnath temples and the temple in the Madhya Pradesh or Vidisha. So these were the really important places where the different temples were constructed, and they played an important role for the emergence of the big cities around the vicinity of those temples. Okay why because the different people used to come there and since the people are coming there so the traders also used to come there they used to sell their stuff such as the perfume garlands and different type of things the uh, execute like uh, the uh, other stones expensive stones were there okay different traders were moving from the different part of the not only india but the from the other continents also the people used to move there so we will see all these uh, things that how the different cultures also moved uh, in these uh, particular cities okay so ajmer uh, before that the other temple was included the kanchipuram and uh, madura in tamil nadu and the tirupati in andhra pradesh so also today also these temples are uh, so prosperous and uh, make uh, so much contribution not only the particular area but for the state as well in today's context as well okay ajmer rajasthan was the capital of the chauhan kings in the 12th century which we have already seen that how uh, prithviraj chauhan uh, was ruling there and later on he moved to the delhi as well right so the chauhan kings uh, used to rule the uh, ajmer and this was the capital of the chauhans in the 12th century and later became the suba headquarter under the mughal so we will understand that uh, we have though we have already seen uh, some characteristics of the mughal rule but uh, later on we also understand it in the more details that how these uh, particular provinces of uh, the mughals were divided and how the different uh, art and architectures developed in the rule of mughals okay so remember this so now it is talking about the different uh, network of the small towns and the uh, the towns which got developed the mandapika or the remember these terms which i have already underlined so these terms becomes important because the straightforward question can be asked so always be ready for such type of questions so mandapika or the mandi of later times so we understand that what is the mandi okay to which the nearby villages brought their produce to sell they also had market street called hatta or hat so these terms 
all those people who are belonging to the north india they must be aware about the mandis and the heart as well that these places were where the different shops used to be there people used to bring the different uh, type of uh, not only vegetable but the important the cattle sells uh, they also used to sell their cattle okay and the people used to come to purchase these cattle because in that time these things were important so these type of trade was taking place so we uh, simply understand the uh, meaning of mandap mandi and also about the heart heart means simply a fair or the mela in the hindi we call it okay remember this so mandi we also understand the mandi mandi that the different vegetables uh, sellers are there and they are selling the different type of vegetable so probably that time also apart from the the vegetables different type of things used to uh, be there and these people used to sell so the so remember important term for us is mandapika which was mandi and hatta which was which was heart okay remember this so they have shown uh, depicted a this image particular image so it has elaborately telling or uh, showing that uh, what type of things used to be there and how people used to bring all these important things which was uh, making sense to them at that time okay so let us move ahead and understand the further uh, concept and other things of that time so usually a samanta or in later times a jamidar built a fortified palaces in uh, or near these towns they levied the taxes on the traders so understand the characteristics that how the samantas got the prominence in that time in the medieval whenever the king uh, used to a weak person or uh, whenever there was not a centralized tendency so some type of uh, feudal type of system we cannot say completely feudalistic uh, characteristic developed in india though we can say that these local powers had always helped the uh, king so what they used to do they they uh, these samantas or these jamidar what they used to do they used to levy the taxes on the traders as artisans and the uh, articles of trade and sometimes they donated the right to collect these taxes to local temples as well okay so understand these characteristics that what type of characteristics not only getting developed in the art and architecture as well apart from the polity political uh, scenario if we talk about okay so which had been built by themselves or by the rich merchants these rights were recorded in the inscription that they have survived to this day so this all information has been survived on the inscriptions okay which uh, we were able to decipher or we were able to understand that these type of uh, characteristic these type of things were getting developed in that time so what type of taxes were there in the on the market like the a summary has been provided in the 10th century uh, which has been found in the rajasthan so let us understand so there was a taxes in kind of sugar and jaggery dyes threads cottons coconut salt areca nuts and the butter sesame oil on cloth as well okay besides there were taxes on the trades and those who sold metal, metal golds uh, on the distillers and the oil cattle fodder and the lots of things so we have already seen that the different mandis were there and different hearts were there so all these things were getting sold and getting purchased there in these particular mandis and the hearts remember this and all these were getting taxed as well so whenever there will be tax what tax will be do the tax will provide the amount for the exchequer and to the kings as well to not only which adds to the prosperity of the king but also for the kingdom okay and for the uh, for other people who are living in this particular kingdom or the people who are living in the vicinity of that particular town remember this that how all these things are connected okay so traders and the big traders or the small traders now it is talking about that there were many kind of traders these few things are just to provide the context okay otherwise i will let you uh, know that this particular term is important uh, just mug it up remember this note it down so all these things will be there so remember all, all these things whenever i say that this particular term, term is important so you may face such type of question in the examination okay so there were many type of traders these included the banjaras so we have already seen that how alauddin khalji uh, in that in his reign that how control banjaras uh, to control the prices of uh, that time so we have already covered and in the 
uh, more depth and we will understand when we will cover the or when we will go on the advanced phase okay so several traders especially host traders were there they formed the association with the uh, headman who negotiated on the behalf with the uh, different warriors different dynasties and the kings okay they used to sell and purchase all these horses because there were battles were going on right so we understand that uh, there was the vijayanagar dynasty and there was the bahmani dynasty they used to uh, they were fighting continuously and they used to purchase all these horses and uh, the other kingdoms who were emerging in that time they also used to purchase right delhi sultanate was there so they also used to purchase all these horses and these uh, things which we have all earlier mentioned remember all these things so how they were adding to the prosperity not only uh, in their kingdoms but also the uh, the trade and the traders okay the most famous being the manigram and the uh, nana desi so what is it so now it is providing there were the several such guilds in the uh, south india from the 8th century onwards so we have already seen so guilds mean shreni sometimes you will see this term shreni is also used for the guilds okay what is the guilds guilds is a uh, type of association so we have already seen that these guilds became so powerful so rich that they also started uh, similar activities like the banks they used to lend this money the uh, rich uh, other people of the uh, rich society used to provide the money to these guilds or these shrenis and they used to invest in the different type of activities so that they can provide the uh, interest and the Uh, the banking activities which has been done by the today's banks these type of activities were getting done in the medieval period because these people these shrenis or the guilds became so powerful and so rich okay so the most famous being the manigrama and the nana desi so remember these terms who were these manigrama and the nana desi these were the guilds and these became famous and the powerful and the prosper as well okay so these guilds traded extensively both with the peninsula and with the southeast asia and china since they were trading so of course this they must be having the money then only they were uh, doing the trade with the china southeast asia okay west asia also so communities like the chetiars and the marwadis oswal who went on the became the principal trading group of the country so they also uh, did all these uh, they also took part in these trade and trading related activities in that time okay and they how they also contributed in the uh, prosperity of the medieval india okay so these are the information that how the different items were getting sold and which type of community were getting developed but which is of no important like these things are not important for the examination purpose hence i have not included any detail of of these uh, particular paragraph so what would happen that only those important things which matters for the examination we will look at them and hence it will provide you uh, a lot of time uh, to read all those specific points which we are going to cover in this particular chapter and apart from this you do not need to worry about anything else okay so now it is providing the little bit information about the kabul as well the kabul and the present day afghanistan so kabul and kandhar were linked to the a uh, celebrated silk route so we have seen that how kushanas in the time of kushanas that the silk uh, indian subcontinent dominated the silk route okay though this uh, route was uh, basically uh, got famous because of the chinese traders okay because they used to send the silk from this particular route but in the time of kushanas we dominated this particular route okay so we have already covered it so when you will uh, look at the earlier chapters and the class 6 history which i have already covered and the previous chapter of the history class 7 then you will understand it okay so let us move ahead so trade in horses was primarily carried on the this particular route in the 7th century in the 17th century jean baptist trevenier a diamond merchant so remember uh, in the pcs exam says a pcs exam several times this particular name has been asked that who was the jean baptist trevenier so he was a diamond merchant okay so these names whenever any traveler is coming to india or whenever he is uh, that person is mentioning any account related to india or uh, about any king or dynasty then these things becomes important okay so he estimated that the horse trade at the kabul amounted somewhere around 
thirty thousand annually, so which was uh, really huge sum. So different type of trades were also taking place, such as the fruits, dates, carpets, camel trade, silks. Okay, fresh fruits from the Kabul to the subcontinent, and slaves were also being brought here for the sale. Remember this: all these type of activities were taking place. So now, providing information of the crafts in the town. So crafts person of Bidar were so famed for their labor in copper and silver that it came to be called as Bidri. So its forward question can be asked from this particular term that uh, in the medieval era, what is the term? Bidri used to build up. Okay, so remember this. This was an inlay work. So what is inlay work? So here you must be uh, seeing this particular image. So here, in on this particular craft, what they have done that they uh, this is the inlay work. Something has been carved on this particular lamp type of thing. Okay, so this used to called as the inlay work. Remember this. So who were the famous? the 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 artisans were the famous for the craft person were the famous for the this particular bidri art okay so this in they were so it was later on called as the bidri art remember this so the panchas of the vishwakarma community consisting of the of the gold smith bronze smith black smiths and the masons carpenters were essential to build building of the temples which we were talking about so all these uh, different communities Contributed in making the temples. Okay, so weavers such as the Saliar or the Kaikolars emerged as the prosperous community, uh, making the donations to the temple. So we have already understood that how the in this particular time, traders were uh, getting uh, so much of amount and uh, they were getting so much of prosperity that they started not only donating but they also started working as a band. Okay. So this this is referring a particular community of weavers, which is Saliar or the Kaikolas. Remember this. Let us move ahead. So changing fortune fortune of the town. So Murshidabad, which is in Bengal, West Bengal, on the banks of the Bhagirathi. So if a question comes that Murshidabad is situated where? Where is it situated? So it is. Situated on the banks of Bhagirathi, so remember this. Okay, which rose to the prominence as a center of silk and became the capital of Bengal in which year? Seventeen hundred and four. I have already underlined the important term, important things which are uh, really really make sense for the examination. So just revise all these information which I am uh, just emphasizing time and again. Okay, so pay utmost attention. So now it is talking about the Hampi, Masuli Patna and the Surat. So, architecture splendor of the Hampi. Hampi is located in the Krishna Tungabhadra basin, the nucleus of the Vijayanagara Empire, which was Vijayanagara Empire was founded in 1336. So, it is referring to the that particular time, and Hampi was the prominent city of uh, Vijayanagara Empire. Remember this. So, it was situ situated in Krishna Tungabhadra basin. Okay. So, they have the artisans or the masons have not used the Mortar, okay, or the cementing agent in this particular construction of the walls, okay, they use the technique of interlocking. So here it has shown that how the interlocking works. If you will pay attention in these walls, they have used the interlocking techniques. So this was technique was also used by the Indus Valley civil uh, civilization. So we have already seen. Okay, let us move ahead. So here the fortified city, the Portuguese travel. Traveler who uh, came to the India, Domino's Domingo Pies. Remember this, Domingo Pies. Describe the Hampi in his uh, like what type of things he has seen here when he was uh, there in the uh, the rule of the Vijayanagara dynasty. At this entrance of the gateway, where those pass who came from the Goa, this king has made within a very strong city fortified with walls and towers. These walls are not like those of the other cities, but are made of very strong masonry, such as the would be found in few other parts. And inside, very beautiful rows of buildings made after their manner with the flat roof. So it has provided the detailed information about the architectural work, architectural work of that particular dynasty, and about the the people who have constructed it. That they have done it beautifully. 
okay though we have already seen earlier that what type of technique they used they did not use any type of cementing agent okay at the right hand side it is providing some more information during their rule whose rule in the time of vijayanagara kingdom's rule during their rule the vijayanagara rule took over the keen interest in building the tanks and canals and the anant raj sagar tank was built with the 1.37 km long earthen dam across the maldivi river so name of the particular dam anant raj sagar tank okay 1.37 km long and the it was made on maldivi river so krishna dev rai he was an important uh, king of this particular dynasty vijayanagar uh, vijayanagar dynasty okay so vijayanagar kingdom so there were the four dynasties sangam saluva tuluva and the araivedu so we will understand all about this particular dynasty and the different rulers of the particular time uh, among them the krishna deva rai was the one of the important ruler so he built a huge stone embankment between two hills to create a massive uh, lake near vijayanagar okay from which the water was carried through the uh, these particular fields okay for the irrigate, irrigation purpose and to the gardens as well so we understand since the this particular uh, the farming activities and the other people who required the water this particular embankment used to play a very important role okay so the muslim merchants chatties agent of european traders such as the portuguese uh, thronged at the market of the hampi so they used to live there so it is providing this information though it is not important for us but just to put things to context that all those people and including the muslim merchants as well since these people used to come from the arab in peninsula and they also used to be live there and do the business or these trading activities so the temple were the hub of the cultural activities which we have already seen and there was a concept of devdasi what is the meaning of devdasi a temple dancer performed before the deity and he used to be a female okay and uh, this the royalty and the masses in the many pillared hall in this virupaksha a form of seva temple so now it is providing the some information about the not only about the temple but also a cultural uh, cultural activity which used to happen there so devdati devdasis used to perform the uh, dance okay before the deity okay. so virupaksha is a temple a form of shiva it has uh, the several pillars hall remember this okay and the mahanavmi festival known today as the navratri in the south was uh, one of the most important festival celebrated at hampi so which was the most important festival mahanam remember this okay so it in the it is called called as the navratri as well. okay so the this is the important or beautiful image of hampi uh, the remnants of the hampi okay. they found the these archaeologists have found the mahanam platform where the king received the guest and accept the tribute from the subordinate chief so remember what was the utility of this particular mahanam platform king used to received the guest and also accepted the tributes from the subordinated chiefs so now it is talking about the surat that it used to be called as the gateway to the west so why it was uh, called as the gateway to the west surat in the gujarat was the emporium of the western trade during the mughal period along with the kambe which is gulf of kambar or kambar and somewhat later the ahmedabad surat was the gateway for the trade with the west asia since we already understand that surat is in west or uh, to that context the entire gujarat is in west okay some part is in central but most of the part is in west in india so hence the via the gulf of ormuz the sultan also has been called the uh, the surat also has been called as the gateway to mecca because the many pilgrim ships set sail from there as well okay so english chronicler what was the name of the english uh, english chronicler the ovington who wrote an account of the port in 1689 about this particular port because it was the prominent for not only for the trading activity for the different religious religious activity also, uh, also this particular uh, port was very important remember this the textiles of the surat were famous for their gold lace borders which is called as jari and had a market in the west asia africa and europe remember this this particular part is important 
but uh, this particular uh, part which is related to uh, gold lace border which is also called as jerry is important okay so now it is providing at the left hand side about the hundi what is the hundi so hundi is a note recording a deposit made by a person the amount deposited can be claimed in the another place by the presenting the record of the deposit okay so hundi used to a short of receipt okay by showing that particular receipt the person can be claim uh, the amount that has been uh, deposited okay that uh, it is a note regarding the deposit made by the person the amount deposited can be claimed another place by the presenting the record of deposit they just need to deposit this particular receipt and they used to uh, show that they have already deposited the amount or they can use to claim it okay so it was noteworthy that the surat hundi were honored in the far of the market of cairo egypt and the basra in iraq and the antwerp in belgium so all these places so understand the uh, important of these uh, or the prosperity of the trader which used to belong from the surat their hundis used to be uh, had some value in the egypt iraq and the belgium remember this so they were so rich and this were so prosper and they had so great relation in that era as well so bombay present day mumbai where the english east india company shifted its headquarters in 1668 so this particular information uh, becomes important that in which year east india company uh, shifted its headquarter to mumbai okay so it was 1668 so now it is talking about the trouble waters of the mazuli patna that how this particular city got disintegrated and the how the other uh, places got the prominence the town of mazuli patna or mazuli patna literally fish port because mazuli means fish okay lay on the delta of krishna river where is it it is situated on krishna river so dutch and english east india companies attempted to control the mazuli patnam as it became the most important port of the andhra coast mazuli patnam is a port of andhra coast andhra coast remember this the fort at the mazuli patnam was built by dutch remember this who built the fort there it was built by dutch remember this so three four information in this short uh, uh, paragraph that the dutch and english were competing okay and uh, they attempted to com uh, the control the mazuli patnam which was the port of andhra coast and a fort was also constructed by the dutch remember this so the different uh, so it is providing at the right hand side what is used to be factor so here a story type of thing has been narrated okay uh, if there is a writer uh, who has provided all this information so let us uh, read it thoroughly So this is description of Mussoorie Patna by William Mathwold, a factor of English East India Company, who and who used to be a factor. Factor used to be an official in charge of trading activities. They used to in the European Trading Company, and they used to be called as factor. This is the chief port of uh, Golconda, and where the right for uh, worshipful East India Company have their agent. It is a small town but populous, unwalled. ill built and were situated within all the spring or bark brackish it was first a poor fisher town okay afterwards the convenience of the road made it residence for the merchant and so continues since our and the dutch nation frequented this coast so all these used to like the dutch were there english were there so it is providing the information that these people used to live there and this was the uh, illy built uh, place okay not uh, very much good but hence it was uh, good for the making the port hence they used to use it but we have already seen that how prosper it was but after some time it no it uh, definitely must have lost its uh, relevance for all these people who were, who came after the uh, 16th century and 15th century remember this okay so the uh, kutb shahi ruler of golconda imposed royal monopolies on the sale of textiles spices and the other items to prevent the trade passing completely into the hands of various east india companies so what they were trying so once uh, these 
trading companies came to the india such as the dutch came and the english also came to the india okay before that the portuguese uh, portuguese were there okay so the kutub shahi ruler of the golconda what they did they imposed the royal monopolies on the sale of textiles spices and the other items to prevent the trade passing okay completely into the hands of the various east india companies so they understood that uh, if uh, they will provide the monopoly to these people uh, then the people who are living in their kingdom they will be suffered because they may these people may ri uh, rise the price of the particular uh, things which were important for the people who are living there in their kingdom okay for an example if the paper if they are trading in paper and uh, these kings provided them monopoly in paper then the, it, it will be in their hands of the these uh, dutch or the english people they may rise the uh, price of these particular paper and now the indians also use the paper earlier if maybe they were selling it for one anna and uh, after getting the monopoly they may raise it to the four anna as well so this was their threat hence they also imposed the different taxes to save the uh, not only the domestic trades but also the people of their kingdom okay so in 1686 and 87 mughal emperor aurangzeb annexed the annexed the golconda and the new company uh, trade center it was felt that uh, they should combine the political administration commercial role because the these mughal were very powerful okay and uh, the english uh, they were very shrewd what they did they understood that they cannot directly fight with the mughals they cannot compete with the mughal okay hence they first try to gain the power of political administration commercial uh, power and later on once uh, slowly and gradually they became the ruler of the india as well okay so this is just to provide some context new towns and the traders initially great indian traders like the mullah abdul ghafur and the virji vora who owned the large number of ships competed with these india these uh, uh, different traders like the english east india company and the dutch and the portuguese however the european companies used their naval power to gain the control of the sea trade and forced indian tra traders work as their agents ultimately the english emerged as the most successful commercial and political power in the subcontinent so not we will understand it this in the more detail when we will discuss about the further chapter and we will discuss when we will discuss the advanced book and uh, these characteristic will be seen in the uh, uh, modern india that how they became the prominent power in the indian subcontinent and how they became the ruler of the uh, particular nation called india okay remember this the 18th century saw the rise of bombay calcutta madras so all these new cities getting developed so we have already seen that how that particular factor provided the information that how masulipatnam was declining though it was very important for the earlier ruler but uh, the new as the new people or the new companies came into the india and it lost all its uh, importance okay so the new centers emerged such as bombay calcutta madras Uh, these were the nodal cities not only in that time but also today as well the craft commerce underwent the major changes the merchant and the artisans were moved into the black towns established by european companies with new cities so we will understand why the they used to call it the black towns so they had the clear cut division between the black and white because they were white and they used to discriminate on the basis of the colors okay so this is this uh, some sort of the uh, practice of apartheid remember this the blacks or the native traders and the craft person were the confined here while the white rulers occupied the superior residences of fort st uh, george in the madras and fort st william in the calcutta so these two forts i have provided the names so these were the settlement okay of these uh, east india company so first is st george where was it it was in madras St George in Madras St George is Madras and the St William in Calcutta St William in Calcutta so two we have talked about two uh, fort St George in Madras and St William in Calcutta remember this okay and then this is the last portion which today we will cover about the story of Vasco da Gama and the Christopher Columbus in the because this uh, become important because as the portuguese came to the india and uh, all these uh, thing uh change rapidly after coming 
these Portuguese came to the India that how the uh, trading practices trading of the, these uh, people who were there and trading different type of things how they uh, initially uh, came to just to be a trader later on the English also followed and how they became the ruler of India so we will see that how this gradual process uh, happened okay so in the 15th century European sailors undertook the unprecedented exploration of sea roads they were driven by the desire to find the way of reaching to the Indian subcontinent and obtaining the spices so why because in that particular time in the Europe the along with the renaissance new the developments were also happening and the prosperity was also uh, being there like the, they were getting prosper in terms of uh, the farming activities okay so they uh, they also used to consume the meat so how to procure the meat so this was the important concern for them okay and uh, in the western part okay Turks dominated the these or uh, we will understand these Ottoman kingdom they they were so powerful that uh, they did not allow these European to uh, directly trade with the India so hence there was a need of to for these European people to directly trade with the India how to surpass this so that is why they were taking the all these uh, activities in that particular time okay so let us understand the story so Vasco da Gama the Portuguese sailor sailed down the African coast went around the Cape of Good Hope and crossed over the Indian Ocean okay so he from where he took uh, this particular route he took it from the Cape of Good Hope okay so when you will look at the African continent then you would be able to understand that what is the Cape of Good Hope southern part of the African continent is called as the Cape of Good Hope so you will once you will uh, look at the map you would be able to understand okay. so his first journey took more than a year he reached in uh, Cali uh, Calicut in 1498 remember this when did he reach to India or in Calicut he came here in the 1498 remember this and returned Lisbon to his capital okay and the following year he lost two of his uh, four ships and the 170 men so these detail apart from the year it is not an important thing for us okay so let us move ahead the and he was followed by so we were talking that who all uh, were the people after the portuguese uh, which came in india and they also established their uh, uh, foothold in the indian subcontinent which were english dutch and the french sailors the search for the sea routes to the india had another unexpected fallout uh, on the assumption that the earth was around Christopher Columbus an Italian decided to sail westward across the Atlantic Ocean to find the route to India he landed in the West Indies which got their name because of the confusion because he thought that uh, he has found the India and he did it in 1492 so he was followed by the sailors and the conquerors from the Spain and the Portugal uh, who occupied large part of the Central and the Southern America often uh, destroying the earlier settlement in the area so what they did these people moved to that particular part and the inhabitant the original inhabitant of these particular lands they were uh, either butchered they were killed or they were uh, removed from those particular areas and the new colonies were settled by them so this was the story okay so remember the dates different things we have understood there was uh, not a lot of thing uh, but sort of stories so remember the important uh, cities the ports and the towns this is only important for us as of now and the other things we will understand the further chapters and the later on chapters okay so keep on revising and do not forget to like and subscribe the channel and also share the initiatives with your friends and fellow aspirants i will see you in the next chapter till then bye